Mrs. Charles Heaton's great biography on Leonardo da Vinci, 1874. This is my favorite biography for many reasons, which we will discuss later on. But I want to talk about this typical Victorian era decorative gilt uh, of the books. We have here the Trevisio Monument. You'll see a sketch right there. Somewhat faded, but still, still apparent. We'll cross over upper right hand corner. You'll see the Last Supper. Very small. Another reproduction right there. You'll see the table, small figures, the easel, and then the artist palette. Publisher really took a lot of effort into making the cover of this book. Let's go on down here. You'll see the Sforza Castle, which Leonardo stayed. And uh, the beautiful reproduction photograph there. Head on over to the bottom left. You'll see the Cannon Foundry. Uh, 1487 to 1488. You'll see that work printed very often. Popular work indeed. Moving more towards the bottom middle now, you have the lion, of which was created and presented with lilies coming out of the breast of the mechanic mechanical robot created by da Vinci. You'll also see a bell and a compass down there. Moving up now, the beautiful title mentions Leonardo da Vinci, beautiful gilt. You also see a trumpet, musical score in the back, and then of course the beautiful geometric design created for Luca Pacioli's 1498 book De Divina Proporzione, which was published in Venice 1509. Notice also the wings, since we all know that da Vinci was very interested in flight. Once we flip this book over, you'll notice at the top we have the head of a warrior, which is noted to be Darius. It's just reversed. Coming down, you'll see Leonardo da Vinci in a beautiful gilt. Various tools used by musicians and artists. Some leaves and the beautiful emblem, which is also in the title page of the book. Reproduced here, beautiful and, and gilt. And the Macmillan stamp of New York. The beautiful gold on the side. The edge of the pages are in good plus condition. Now that we've taken a look at the aesthetic of it, I want to get to the, the heart and soul of the book. And when we start to open up the book, we now see photographs of the artworks. So what you're seeing here uh, are photographs of the original works so that students can understand and get a better idea of what these paintings were in their original state. You see a beautiful piece of sculpture here in Milan that was just created by Pietro Magni two years prior to the publication of this book. I also want to state that sketches and engravings are still important, but a year prior to this work, Mrs. Heaton published A Concise History of Painting. We look at the title there, and in the middle it says, With Illustrations and Permanent Photography. Our books now are being produced with photographs. And so photography has taken the lead here. Students and historians, even, even just lovers of art history, can now enjoy the paintings uh, by the great masters in their original state. I had mentioned early in the video that I wanted to discuss various reasons uh, for this being my favorite biography. First and foremost, it's written by a woman during the women's suffrage movement at the height of the Victorian age, being published concurrently by Macmillan of New York and Chaswick of London. The pictures that you see in the book now appear as photographs. There's no longer sketches or engravings. The student and the lover of art history can now enjoy the paintings in their original state. Mind you also that this is pre-Jean-Paul Richter, uh, 1883, published his great work, on the literary works of Leonardo da Vinci, 
and uh, to have a woman do a biography, okay, of this magnitude with this information, the transcriptions and the translations, this is huge. It's well-researched, compiled, and categorized. It really is truly a work of art within itself. In her preface, she writes, Even now there are rumors of unpublished researches which will throw important light on Leonardo and his works. Is Mrs. Heaton foreshadowing Jean-Paul Richter's The Literary Works of Leonardo da Vinci nine years prior to publication? I think so. Unfortunately, on June 1st, 1883, Mrs. Heaton passed away. It would have been fascinating to read her commentary and to get her insight and her opinions about the great work of Jean-Paul Richter. If we read from the first paragraph of the preface, it reads, It must not be supposed that the present volume is intended to rank as a history of the life, works, and discoveries of the great Italian whose name it bears. Well, Mrs. Heaton, I want to thank you because your work truly is fascinating. It would take 65 more years for Sir Kenneth Clark to publish his work on Leonardo da Vinci titled An Account of His Development as an Artist. What you gave the world back in 1874 was something that was never done before. And it is this video that I dedicate to you. Thank you very much for giving us such a great work on the greatest man that ever lived.